Why does the U.S. need to choose a president between two elders? To be honest, both candidates are awfully pushing it considering their ages. Heck, I'm not sure if one of them will even live to see the end of their term. Aren't there like any 50-year-olds who can do better job at being president without almost dying? Because of old age, there were younger options in their respective primaries. Voters decided that no, there wasn't. It usually takes a lot of time to work your way up to a national profile. You have to be 25 to even be elected to the House, 30 to be a senator and 35 to be president. In practice, though even House members are usually prominent local politicians or business owners that have had to work 10 to 15 years to get elected to Congress, and it is only then that they can begin making a name for themselves which is still hard as one of only 400-plus faceless congressmen. That takes another 10 to 20 years before you can move up to a position like senator or state governor. And then from there start making your national profile that will give you enough notoriety to run for president. This is also why dynasties happen so often. The likes of George W. Bush already had his national profile from his father. Candidates like Obama and maybe someday AOC are quite rare in how fast they've climbed the political ladder, and Obama's inexperience was indeed a very big hurdle for him in 2008. Young people not voting reliably probably has a non-zero impact as well. T.L. Doctor. Takes a long ass time to get enough of a resume that people will trust you. At this point we're just voting for the vice president who will inherit the office. The median age upon entering the office is actually 55 so quite young. This year we just happen to be on the higher end of the age spectrum. Also realizing Biden will be 81 if he wins is absurd lol. Younger eligible voters just don't vote. Older voters vote for the people they are comfortable with like for the past two presidential elections. You would think Bernie would have ran against Trump both times. But what we found out was that's just enthusiastic youths who were being very loud about Bernie, but failed to convince their friends to vote as well. Being old isn't even in my top five problems with one of them. In America, if you have enough money, you can convince our entire population that the sky is purple. Answer. The minimum age for being president here is 35. Now, it's typically unheard of to go straight to president without having at least some political experience, which most other presidents have had tons of. This generally takes up several more years from being 35. So the socially accepted age has built up to being in the 60s or 70s. Because those are the two candidates chosen, you can vote for a third party, but they will almost definitely not get into office. Whoever the Democrats choose and whoever the Republicans choose are the candidates for the year. And you have no say in that unless you vote in the primaries. I don't know why it has to be like this. I did my best as a citizen and used my one vote and a small donation to try and help a younger, intelligent candidate, but my choice lost the primary to Joe Biden. Sadly, I can't do much more than that. If I was going to wildly and recklessly speculate I would say things like corrupt controlling political parties, uneducated citizens due to constant school funding cuts, massive corporate lobbying efforts, high levels of bigotry across voters on both ends of the spectrum. A large older generation that votes more than our young people and thinks the younger generation is shit. Trump was a given. Generally, an incumbent president runs for a second term for their party. However, this gives pause to many, especially younger, progressives, who are now weighing the value of eight years of Biden, Harris, versus getting another shot of getting a true progressive candidate in 2024.
One thing you have to credit Trump on was that he destroyed the establishment Republican Party in 2016. But Democrats, who fielded a very corporatist Hillary Clinton, did not learn that lesson. In the 2020 Democratic primary, Biden was trailing very badly. Mayor Pete won Iowa and Bernie won in H. Biden was a distant fourth or worse in both. Ultimately it was SC that saved Biden and strong African-American support of the DNC that created the situation we're in. Mayor Pete and Amy realized that a slugfest in the primaries would only drain coffers, weaken and divide Democrats, and give Trump a second win. They chose to bow out in support of Biden, even though they had higher delegate counts at the time. Progressives like Bernie and Warren reluctantly followed later. The DNC has made a number of moves to temper progressives. For example, they ruled not to support candidates running against incumbent Democrats in the primaries. A backlash of AOCs and the squad's victory in 2018. Until ranked choice voting comes into U.S. elections, the two parties will hold sway over our election choices. Unlike many other more modern democracies republics, we have a winner-takes-all mentality. We also encourage, allow the campaigning adverts and donations and whatever to go on forever. So politicians are basically always campaigning for re-election, starting the day they are elected. We also have no practical limits on campaigns. You literally need hundreds of millions of dollars at this point. Either yourself, or campaign, or both, or special interest groups or all three to get elected as president. You can run for president age 35. I'm 37 and actually would like the job. In theory, you know what I don't have? Money. Also, political connections spanning decades to get endorsements. So, it doesn't matter what my politics are. No one that matters will ever hear them. You know who has access to a shitload of money and connections. Group A old folks with a career in politics, Biden, McCain, etc. Group B, folks with money that dabble in politics when drunk tweeting, Trump, Perot, Reagan, etc. Group C, folks who are groomed specifically for the job by the party elders, Obama, Kennedy, Truman, etc. Group D, political families, Bush, Kennedy, Roosevelt, Adams, etc. Group B. War Heroes Participants. Washington, Jackson, Grant, Eisenhower, etc. Whoever has the most money and least morals wins. Then if someone votes a certain part for Prez, they will likely not bother looking anything up or researching and just go down the ballot picking. Everyone from the same party. The educated voter does their homework but that is probably 1% of the vote. So now you have a pres in Congress that are majority one party. That group gets a lot done. Looks really good in the media. Almost guarantees re-election. Or, you have a split. And with the us versus, the mentality that means nothing gets done. Why would a Republican not veto a Democrat bill or whatever? And with different elections in different years the parties and candidates have to balance their views to try and keep their spotter look just enough like the enemy to get a vote just because that can change the dynamic midterm for a president and cause absolutely nothing important to be done while he remains in office no one in politics as the national level is or has ever been interested in what the actual people want at least not for decades however we keep having to choose which of the two dominant parties we want to fuck up our lives for a few years to vote for. It has become a zero-sum game of who do I hate less. Civilizations are usually judged by their golden era, and the USA is having a hard time admitting that theirs is over. It spanned, roughly, the years surrounding WW2 to the end of the Cold War. Before that we were isolationist and doing just fine on our own. And since then, we have interjected ourselves into every conflict worldwide and lost on most of those occasions. 
South African here. President is 67 and on the younger side of many older terrible presidents we had. Mandela excluded. Our presidents are out of touch with the millions of unemployed, poor young people in my country, and have always felt TGERE should be an age limit to which they can be eligible to run. Loved your question, because I wondered the same thing. I follow U.S. politics closely and while I like neither of your candidates, I would have voted Biden as I feel he brings the best options to your country's table. I also really like his pick for VP. So some really interesting answers here. It all comes down to who has the money. If they're old AF apparently it doesn't matter. I am an American and will never understand it. Well I have no idea but I'm not unfamiliar. Here in Mexico our president is 66 years old and looks even older. My family is constantly wondering if that guy was always such a weirdo or if he's just starting to go senile. Worst part is that he still has another four years ahead of him. It's been only two years with him in the chair, it has felt like way longer. I do agree with you that maybe younger people should be the ones America votes for, but here we are and we all know the better option. Even I that doesn't even live over there wants people to understand that another four years of Trump will be doom. Old people are deified here because there's still a huge contingent that believes age equals wisdom. A common phrase from various seniors is, I didn't get this age being dumb. Discounting the fact that, no, you got to that age because your behavior is just tolerable enough that you aren't worth a potential death sentence. Not because you're an oracle of wisdom. Nobody will vote for anybody suitable. My vote doesn't matter when there are millions of 70 plus voters who will never consider anyone younger than themselves. There should be an age limit 100%. The answer to any why question regarding America is money. It's always fucking money. Same reason we have to choose between red and blue. It's all a facade since in the end the rich win the poor suffer while we fight each other. Washington said that a party system will doom the US and it has. People fight blindly for their party just because it's not as bad as the other side when both Sides are full of shit but I guess a little less shit is better. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.